Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So today is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna be talking about something very similar to football and it's called futsal. And I'm not alone this time, I'm joined with Blaze Gap. How's Blaze, it going? good man, how are you? Good. So Blaze is actually a futsal player, used to play football growing yep. up, then transitioned into futsal. So you've had some experience with the England national team. Yep, so and I've played for England under 19s and England under 23s. Amazing. And I'm still looking to try and break into the first team for England. Great, that's amazing. And you're off to Portugal in a few months to see some opportunities over there to play futsal at a pro level? Yeah, yeah. So in Portugal, I'm looking to play for a second division Portuguese futsal team to try and improve my game, get become more cultured, and yeah, see where things take me. Yeah, so it seems like Blaze has got a promising future in the futsal game. If you've never played futsal, if no one's ever seen futsal before, how would you describe the game? Believe it or not, futsal as a sport probably relates more to the likes of handball, netball, basketball in terms of the tactics, the rule changes compared to football. First of all, the way you control and receive the ball. It's totally different, mainly because of the fact that you're receiving it with solely your foot. You may be shooting with the toe. If you ever took a shot in football with your toe, you'd be kind of looked down on. Whereas in futsal, if you're taking a shot with your toe, there's going to be more power, it's quicker, it's sharper. So yeah, there's so many different parts of the foot that you would use in futsal rather than in football. Outside of the UK, so players such as Neymar, Ronaldinho, these kind of flary South American players grew up from playing futsal to playing football. Cool. So a big difference is you're implementing different parts of the foot that are uncommon yep. in football. Because in football, when you're receiving the ball, most of the time you're taking a heavier touch out your feet to get space to advance up the pitch. But maybe because in futsal it's such close quarters, you really need to protect that ball. How about we look at a couple of drills that guys can work on at home to improve the sole of the foot control? How's yeah, sure, let's go right, for it. Let's go. The best one for futsal to warm up and begin with, because it's close range if you've got a partner as well, is to just alternate with both feet using the sole and just passing it between each other on the bounce. So just keep the ball fluid, fast pace, and then gradually, as you go, you can build up the speed. Just little taps with the sole of your foot. Make sure it sticks to your sole. And then, yeah, that's the first one. A drill that I like to do to, as a pivot to warm up and use the sole of my foot is just to drag it across my body like this. And then just go backwards like this, alternate feet like this, and then, yeah. I love that sound. So you're wearing specific foot sore shoes. So the yeah. bottoms of the soles, they're designed for this kind of hardwood court. Yeah. Gives you a good grip. So yeah, yeah. I've not got foot sore shoes on, but I'm going to give this one a go. So I'm just okay. moving backwards kind of side to side. Yep, like just one foot, perfect. Dragging it across. That's it, perfect. And then, and then just backwards. And then, yeah, and then alternating feet. Foot. Natural, there we go. Nice. <laughs> what would be the biggest struggle from someone who plays the outdoor game, 11 aside, coming into futsal? What do you think their biggest struggle would be at first? So for me, personally, I would say fitness. So in football, because, because of the fact you're at a continuous rate, it's not very stop-start. It, it, it's, it's like you're running a long-distance race kind of thing. It's based on your endurance most of the time. Whereas in futsal, it's very much interval. So it's very stop-start. Sometimes when you're in a live match and you're on the ball on the wing, you're literally going from 0% using up your energy in a static position to shift in your speed to sway off the defenders. So you're kind of switching between gears a lot more often using a different kind of fitness. So it's a bit more intense on the indoor game. So you think you might burn out quicker as yeah. an outdoor player coming yeah. in at first? No, 100%. So talking more about futsal itself, a few of the differences that are pretty obvious. Obviously, first thing, yep. the ball here. The futsal ball is a little bit smaller. Yep. And Obviously. something with the bounce, as you can see, on the futsal ball, it dies a lot quicker. You rarely see any headers, the ball going up in the air, only if a keeper throws it. So in, in futsal, we try to keep it as low to the ground as possible. Cool. And another thing, see behind us, this is a futsal yep. goal. A lot smaller than a regular 11 aside goal. And you mentioned about using the toe. Is that because it's more efficient, because it is so fast paced, you can close down quicker? Usually for a shot in 
outdoor football, you're going to draw the leg back, have a nice back swing sure, and follow yeah. through. Does the toe allow you to generate more power with a quicker action to catch keepers off guard? Or... Yeah, so there's less back lift off your shooting leg when you're shooting with the toe of your foot. So if you're able to reduce that, that, that gap and increase the speed, yeah, you're going to be able to score more yeah. efficiently. And another thing, obviously, the court a lot smaller yep. than 11 side pitch, less players on the pitch. So it is five players on each team, that's including the yep. goalie. So you're going to get a lot more touches because there's less players that you have the option to pass to. And often with that, I'm imagining the tactics have to be a lot different because in 11 side, you set up a back four or depending on what formation you play, yeah, you've got your yeah. defenders, midfielders, strikers who are pretty much in those positions throughout the game. But it's a bit more free flowing in futsal, is it not? When a striker can come and receive the ball deep and yeah. everything's kind of interchanging. It's very quick. You have to be very tactically aware. You're more likely to get... 20 more touches on the on the ball in a futsal match than in football so for me when I was playing football the reason why I really wanted to get introduced in the futsal is that I just felt like I was getting more of the ball I was getting more involved mm. and yeah I was just enjoying it a lot more. Blaze thanks so much for giving Thank us a one-on-one -on -one, a little bit of a tutorial on yeah. futsal kind of an intro there. Blaze just started his YouTube channel he's going to be doing a lot of futsal tutorials sharing his journey when he goes to Portugal and things like that he's going to really document his whole experience so it's going to be really cool for you guys to follow Blaze's journey I know I certainly will and he's going to be doing tutorials skills things like that so if you guys are interested in developing your futsal skills which also translate into the football game yeah. as you were saying players like Ronaldinho, Definitely. Neymar yeah, a lot yeah. of South American players used futsal growing up to really help them get comfortable on the ball develop their foot skills so go over and check Blaze's channel out I'll put it in the end cards and in the description as well but thanks so much Blaze for coming down thanks today again. to do the video appreciate it if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you smash the like button, hit the subscribe button for weekly training videos. See you guys in the next video.